take us through the, the timeline of when Frio became an option? And yeah, it's been a, a crazy uh, few days for me and, and my family, um, and Tor in particular. Monday morning, didn't expect to um, be wearing these colours. On, on Thursday, it is today. So, um, yeah, Monday afternoon, flew back from Sydney after being at a friend's wedding. Um, and then got a phone call from my manager, Tom Petroro, saying that there was some interest there from the Giants um, and the Hawks were, were um, keen to consider it if I was, I was keen to consider as well. A couple of hours later, I get a phone call from my manager again, Tom, saying that Freo were interested as well. Um, and then, yeah, went to bed that night, head racing, woke up the next morning, had to do some fair bit of due diligence and some thinking. Um, and after speaking to um, a number of guys at Hawthorne, uh, Sam Mitchell and, and Rob McCartney, the GM in particular, um, I knew that it was something that I had to pursue and, and um, they would welcome me back with open arms if I decided not to um, go down this line. But um, I felt that it was in the best interest of, of me and, and my partner and, and coming home to, um, to Perth. Um, in particular was something that really interested me. So um, went through a long, or not a long process. It was actually really quick. Um, it's not, not often that you only have 48 hours to decide what you're doing uh, with your life for the next four years, but um, here we are and I'm, I'm really happy to be at Freo. Did you have enough time to do due diligence with Freo and, and talk to people like the coach or, or players here? Yeah, I basically spent all of uh, Monday night, Tuesday, um, and up until midday Wednesday on the phone. Um, which wasn't uh, which wasn't too great. I've, I've never spent that amount of time on my phone before, so it'll be interesting to see what my screen time report is when it comes through, um, probably early next week. But um, I did a lot of lot of due diligence, uh, a lot of thinking needed to be done as well. Um, so a couple of restless nights, but um, I'm really wrapped to be ended up here at Freo. It's um, not what I expected. I, I expected I'd be playing out um, my my contract next year at Hawthorne and and particularly helping out with de developing some of the younger players that they have there. Um, but as I said, I'm, I'm really happy to be here at Freo and, and home around family. Last night I had um, dinner at my sister's place and she's got a, a little daughter and had um, my mum and my other sisters around there. And it was um, just a beautiful moment for us. What was it about Freo, Jager, that attracted you? Can, you? can you pinpoint the couple of things that attracted you to Freo? Yeah, I think um, the year that they had and the year that they've had in the last few seasons, um, particularly finishing where they did on the ladder, I think there's a lot of scope for improvement there. They've got a number of guys who are playing some really good footy at, at a young age and in, um, in a really good position because they're locked in for a number of years um, now. Um, look at the years that guys like Caleb Sarong and Andy Brayshaw had this year. It's particularly exciting to, f to be able to work with them and hopefully I can um, help develop them along the way. And, um, hopefully we're playing finals footy again next year and, and having a crack at a premiership. So that wedding, can we take, it's obviously Stephen's wedding, he's one of your best friends or, and were you best man at that wedding as well? No, I wasn't actually, he had, he's got um, two brothers, so they were, they were his, um, one of them was his best man Jacob and then, and then John O um, was in his bridal party as well. And did you just say, look, oh, you know what, it might, it might, I wouldn't mind playing for the Giants and did it start, is that actually how it started? No, nah, it, start, it started, I've had a um, long, long-term relationship with Jason McCartney. I was, he was my coach when I was in the AAS as a 15, 16-year-old. Um, similarly with Dave Matthews, and I've got great relationships with um, a number of the senior players at, at the Giants just through my connection with, with Steve. Um, and then, yeah, I think it all started just because Jason McCartney saw me mingling with some of the guys um, at the wedding and just thought that I'd be a great, great fit at the Giants. Um, and then he made the phone call to... To the Hawks, and I think the other thing was he knew that Hawthorne were keen to get back into the draft after um, having a crack at guys like Chad Wingard and, and Luke Bruce last year um, for some draft picks. So um, I think that's where it all started, and then and then Freo got involved, and and then um, yeah, here we are. How much of a consideration were the Giants, and if you think Freo did kind of come to the party, do you think you, you could have landed there? Yeah, I think it it made sense selfishly for me to to go and play um, with a good friend. Um, and I think they've got an exciting list as well. And as I said before, I've got some, some long-term long relationships with a, a number of people at the Giants. So it made sense personally for me, but um, it didn't really make sense. I knew that one day I wanted to come home um, to Perth. I've got both my, my partner's family and mine um, are back here. I've lived away for 11 years, um, which has been a long time. And um, yeah, I knew that one day that I'd like to move back here, uh, purchase a house here, knowing that maybe once I finish my career we'd move into that 
Um, so the Giants was definitely a consideration. I really appreciate um, particularly Jason and, and Dave um, having a crack and, and the interest there, but it made, it made a lot more sense to come back home and play for, play for Freo. Did you think about talking to West Coast as well if you, once you decided you, you wanted to come home? Um, I left that, left that with my manager. I, I knew there was only interest from Freo. I don't think there was any interest from, from West Coast. Um, but what particularly excited me about Freo is where they're at. Um, I think they've got a, a really good crack over the next couple of years at a premiership. And I've played, I've played for 11 years and I've played in one final, uh, missed one with, a, with an injury. So I'm really eager to play finals footy and I think this is the best place to do that. What yes. were your discussions with Freo about where you fit in the team? Obviously, it's Andrew, Caleb and Will yep. were great this year. Dave's gone, Monday, and Nat Fife will be back hopefully to fitness for you guys. So where do you fit into that midfield? Still a discussion to be had with, with Justin. I think initial discussions, are, I'll be um, helping those guys out in the midfield, maybe playing a little bit of forward. Um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm really eager to try and help those guys as much as I can and um, sit alongside them and hopefully ride on their coattails a little bit. But um, I think I, I bring some good leadership um, and I think some of those guys are crying out for that. So um, if I can help that, that them in any way, um, I'm going to have a, a good crack at that. And, um, hopefully, yeah, we're, we're premiership teammates in the next few years. And at 28, and, and your, your history of the injury has been well documented, do you feel like you've still got good footy left in? Yeah, I do. I do. This is the, um, you know, the, the most training, the most amount of games I think I've missed. Uh, I'd have to look back at it, but I've, I haven't missed too many games over the last two years. I feel like I, my knee has found a, a little groove, if you like, and it's in a, a really good spot. Um, obviously, it's well documented. I've had a number of injuries over my career. Um, but I feel like I'm, I almost feel, I know I'm 28 years old, turning 29 next year, but I feel a lot younger than that in, in terms of physically and, and mentally. This is going to be a really good challenge for me and I'm really refreshed by it and excited and, and can't wait to get going. But I don't think my body's an issue at all. You said in your discussions with, sorry about that, with Sam at, at the Hawks and it became clear that you need to sort of explore your options. What, what made it clear that you need to look elsewhere? Yeah, I guess I guess the discussions with Sam were, um, you know, this can potentially work for both parties if you'd like to explore it. Um, but then he also said, if you do decide not to go down this track, you're, you're going to be welcome with open arms if you do want to come back. Um, I guess for me, um, him not begging me to stay probably painted a little picture of, of where I was at and where I fit into um, that team. So I felt like that was a good sign that I should explore this option. Did you know Tom was going as well, though? Would that have changed anything if you knew that Tom was yeah. going out of the team? Uh, I'd had discussions with Tom, um, and I think that he knew from a, a while out that he um, was going to look for a trade. Um, and, yeah, I, I, I know that um, that didn't affect my, my situation at all. How do you explain losing two blokes like that? Like, how did they say, describe to you why they were doing that? Uh, they didn't necessarily describe to me why they were doing that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure that they expected to lose this amount of um, senior senior uh, players, if you like, from the team all in one go. Um, but they're they're on a path where um, they're rebuilding and, and wanting to get better and wanting to hit the draft, and I completely understand that. Um, some clubs have to do that, and they've got some really good young talent that I've worked closely with um, over the last few years, I'm, I'm really excited about what they do, they, um, they, they're going to do and the, the direction that they're heading in. Um, and I'm, I'm going to watch on and, and ho hope that they do really well, just not when we, when we play against them. You said you hope your, your new teammates will be premiership teammates soon. How close do you think this group is to be able to take that next step and, and maybe make it to a grand final and go all the way? I don't think too far away. It's hard to put a number on those sort of things. And... To be honest, I've still got a, a, a fair bit of due diligence still to go in terms of um, that. I've only had really 48 to 72 hours to have a look at the list. And um, you don't actually get to see too many Fremantle games when you're living in Melbourne. Um, and I don't watch a whole lot of footy. So um, I've got a fair bit of work to do to try and work out, um, you know, what the, I know what the list is, obviously, but um, how we can get better, got to sit down with the coaches and try and figure that out as well and see how I can help, it, help out with that. How'd you go telling Stephen that you weren't coming after all that? Yeah, um, no, nah, he's, he's, he's very good. He wants what's best for me and, and my family and, and he knew deep down that that was to come back here if it wasn't, if it wasn't to stay at, at Hawthorne. 
Um, so yeah, he got, he got me his blessing. Luke Jackson's another high profile addition over the trade period to the club. Have you given much thought about what it would be like to be at the feet of him and Sean Darcy? Yeah, that's um, that's really exciting for me. I'm, I know coming up against um, Sean and Luke um, in the midfield, they give great service to their, to their mids and um, they, they can both kick a goal as well. So both reasonably big bodied uh, Rockland too. So um, that's something that I look forward to and hopefully uh, develop a really good connection with those two and um, maybe even see Luke playing alongside me as a, as a Ruck Rover or something as well. Do you have a preference what number you wear next year? I haven't looked at what's available to be honest. Um, that was that's been the last thing on my mind. Um, I've had so much, so much going through my head the last few days. So um, we'll wait and see and see what's available and then work it out from there. Does it feel calmer now that it's all sorted? Do you feel like you can sit back and actually enjoy an off season? Yeah, it was a strange moment when the deal went through yesterday. There was obviously a, a lot of excitement about that, but there was also, you know, I've, I've, I'll, I'll tell you, like I'll, I cried a little bit because you're leaving so many good people behind. Um, and it came really abruptly for me. Like you don't really get to say goodbye to all those people. I'm sure over the next couple of months that I'll be able to do that, but you don't get to have conversations with everyone. I've got a lot of close friends inside and outside of footy in Melbourne um, that I have to say goodbye to. So it's been a little bit bittersweet for me, but I woke up this morning, the sun was shining um, and it felt really good to be home. I bet Luke Bruce was trying too, was he? like <laughs> I did have a, a conversation with Luke and he was back home in New South Wales on the farm um, and I think he was in a, a bit of a similar position to me um, this time last year um, and obviously decided to stay which has been really good for him and really good for Hawthorne um, but he just wanted, as I said before about Stephen, he was, he was similar and just wanting whatever was, was best for me and Tori. The deal went through so late, I think it was the last minute. Was there any panic from you it might not get done? Or? Yeah, oh, I've actually been there before. My, my trade from Gold Coast to Hawthorne, I think, was done in the last 10 minutes. So um, Tori was sitting next to me uh, and she was freaking out. I was a little bit more calm than her. But once I got down to the last sort of five minutes, I'm trying to get on to my manager and work out what's going on. And um, finally got a text that came through and said it's done. So. Um, yeah, that was a that was a relief. Have you, have you spoken to any of your, your new teammates much, or have a few of them reached out to you at all since the trades been done? Yeah, they have. They have reached out. I've got a number of messages and phone calls to get back to. Um, yeah, as, as I said, it's been a crazy, crazy few days for me. So I'll get back to everyone over the next few days. I, I think a fair few of the boys are overseas at the moment, so um, a number of WhatsApp messages have come through. Um, but I'm looking forward to um, them all getting back in and getting stuck into it. I've got a lot of people to meet, um, a lot of new faces, um, and, yeah, looking forward to training with them and getting stuck into it.